Hey, how's it going everyone? Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to make a quick video. I wanted to talk about two players, two baseball players who whose cards have just been going up like crazy in value lately over the past about two weeks or so. Um, those two players are Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. As some of you may know, um, ESPN announced a documentary coming up uh, next month in June that's going to be featuring these two players and their home run chase um, in the mid-90s when they were both going head-to-head -head for the record in home runs. So if you watch baseball back in the mid-90s, you definitely remember um, these two squaring off head-to-head, -head, um, hitting home runs, going for the record. It was something, you know, even casual fans or even non-baseball fans were paying attention to just because it was so exciting to watch. Uh, so anyways, ESPN has announced this documentary. And as a result, the price on both Sosa and Maguire cards especially their rookie cards, have gone up in value, just skyrocketed already. A lot of people are speculating that these cards will increase in value just like the uh, Jordan cards and Pippen, Rodman, and you know, Steve Kerr, all the, all the cards from the, the Bulls, the documentary that ESPN did, one well, that's currently running. I think a lot of people that paid attention to card prices from that documentary, from that Bulls documentary, are now hoping that they can cash in uh, in a similar way on these cards, uh, on the Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire cards. So I have some thoughts on that um, that I wanted to share with everyone. I also wanted to show you a few of my um, Sosa and McGuire cards that I have in my personal collection. Um, and I also have some thoughts and suggestions on, you know, is it a good time to buy? Can you still make money or invest in these cards? Um, is there still potential? Or is have you missed the train on the Sosa and, and Maguire rookie cards? Maybe, maybe not. I think there's some maybe that uh, you have some maybe not so much, so I'll go into that as well. So I'm gonna move these cards off to the side and we're just gonna go one by one. I'll show you guys, there's um, actually seven cards total that I'm gonna show today. So the first one um, you just saw there is the 1985 Topps. That's 1985 Topps Mark McGuire. That's the USA baseball team. And this is his first rookie card. Um, this came two years before the 1987 tops, which is also going up in value like crazy. But this is, you know, a very sought after McGuire card, very iconic card. Um, this one in PSA nine has been going up Gosh, I think they're going for 300, 350 or so by now. Um, this 9.5, I think I saw go for around six to 700. Um, the next card I'll show is the Sosa Tops rookie card. Um, I don't have his base card. I just have the Tiffany. This is his top Tiffany 1990 rookie card. Looks the exact same as the non-Tiffany tops card. Um, unless you look very closely, this one actually has the, the shiny surface as is typical with all Tiffany cards. Um, this is another one that's gone up quite a bit in the last two weeks. Um, the Tiffany, I think, is now going for about 100 bucks. 
maybe 125, I think I saw today. That one, again, was probably going for 10 to 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks. That card was going for three weeks ago. Now it's 125. So, again, another card that's got already gone up quite a bit, even before this documentary is even aired. Again, another one that you kind of think about and you question, is it still worth, you know, picking these up at this point as, you know, potential to make money or flip? I mean, if you want these for your personal collection, I would say wait, <laughs> you know, wait for a while. And I think definitely they'll come down. You know, they may still go up from here, but they will definitely come down, I think, over the next, you know, year or two for sure. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but if you're looking to flip these, I would say that's highly risky at this point. Um, you know, you're, you're buying after it's already run up quite a bit, which is typically not the best thing to do with any sort of investment. So we'll see. Um, but my thought is these are probably not the cards to be buying right now from Maguire and Sosa. I think the supply is going to outweigh the demand at a certain point, especially on his base tops, on his, say, PSA 10 1990 tops card. Also, um, his 1990 Leaf, the Sosa 1990 Leaf rookie card, has skyrocketed to, I think, well over 200, 250 um, or more. Again, that was a card you could buy for about 40 bucks, $45. I think you could buy one of those for about a month ago. So just be cautious as you look to buy these for any sort of um, potential to, you know, profit on if you're buying at this point. That's a word of caution. Um, another one I'll show from Sosa that's gone up similarly to the 1990 Topps Tiffany is this. 1990 Bowman Tiffany. So just like the Topps Tiffany, it is one of the more short print rookie cards, really the only two short print rookie cards from the Junk Wax era are Tiffany's. And this Bowman is going for, I would say the nines are going in about a hundred bucks now. And we're going for about 15 bucks a month ago. So I think, you know, the, the speculators, the people that are looking to make money on these have already bought them all up at any sort of reasonable price. And they're definitely going to be looking to flood the market in the next month. Hopefully, you know, they're looking to sell at the peak. But again, I don't know if you're going to see the same outcome with prices like you did with the the bulls documentary because you know the market didn't price in you know the the bulls documentary uh before you know on the on the michael jordan cards the scotty pippen cards the rookie cards you know the rodman's the market hadn't already priced in you know the value that was going to be added to those cards from the documentary um, on the other hand, the sports card market has already reacted to the, the upcoming Sosa and Maguire documentary. The prices have, have already gone up before the documentary airs. So that's one of the key differences. Um, we're already starting to see prices soften on the Jordans and the, and the Pippins. And, you know, it's just things are leveling out. I think probably things will come down a little bit, to be honest, over the next year or two on on some of those cards. Um, the Maguire and Sosa cards, personally, my thought is that they've 
already near peaked. Um, there might still be some room to run, you know, the masses, the, the, the people that are not like hardcore sports card collectors, maybe that, you know, are going to watch the documentary and then go online to, to buy a rookie card of one of these guys. You know, there's only so many of them out there um, that are going to be willing to spend, you know, four or $500 for a Leaf Sosa or, you know, $600, five, 600 or more for a Maguire. Um, PSA 9 tops, which are going for, you know, 350 now. So if you're looking to make a profit on that, when you think about eBay fees, taxes, and all that, um, the prices are really getting up there to really try to make a profit on these. And there's only, I think, going to be so many buyers that, that f jump in when this documentary airs. That's just my personal opinion. You know, there might be people that feel differently, but that's just um, what I'm predicting is going to happen. I do not think we're going to see the same sort of jump in these cards after the documentary begins to air. Okay, anyways, I'm rambling on. Uh, let me show you one more card here. Well, I have several more, but I'll show you the next card, which is this 1985 Topps Tiffany Mark McGuire graded PSA 9 Mint. And this one is another one that has run up quite a bit has run up, I think, now up to $1,000. The PSA 9 Tiffany's are going for. My thoughts on the Tiffany, actually, the Tiffany is probably a safer long-term bet, in my opinion, than the non-Tiffany. I just think Tiffany's in general are going to be the better investment because they're so short print relative to the base, relative to these base um, tops cards. You know, I think there was only about, what, 5,000 of the Tiffany's. And then so the population on the Mint 9 Tiffany's are, is pretty low, especially relative to the base. So, you know, um, that one's a little bit tougher. At $1,000, that might still have some value longer term that's an iconic card and you know low population but short term i don't know can you flip that for a quick buck can you buy it now and sell it in a you know a month or three weeks when the when the uh documentary is airing i'm not so sure maybe maybe not on that one okay next card is another well actually the next three cards that i have here are three cards that I think you might actually be able to make a profit on at this point. You may actually be able to still, well, these cards are still, let's say, achievable and still um, a pretty good value for Maguire and Sosa cards, considering where the 1985 Tops is currently trading in PSA 9, the, the currently selling. Um, so let me show you. The first one is this 1985 Chong. It's the Modesto A's. This is a minor league card for Mark McGuire. This is actually an error card. So this one has the incorrect spelling on his last name. If you can see there, it's M-C-G-U-I-R-E. So somebody messed up. Somebody got fired when they were printing these. No, probably not. But anyways, um, this card is pretty rare. The population is, is very low on these relative to other Maguire rookie cards or pre-rookie cards. Again, that one's from 1985. And that one, I think, is going for anywhere between two to And considering now that card is going for well less than the 1985 Topps PSA 9, I think there's tremendous value in this card. If you believe that Maguire cards will maintain some level of, um, you know, the, the price level that they're at, 
you know, as long as the, you know, there is a chance that his cards go right back down to the price that they were at before the documentary, you know, say in a year from now, who knows, maybe the 1985 is trading, you know, it's selling for 60 bucks again. The PSA nines are at 60 bucks could happen. And if that's the case, I think probably all of his cards will level back out to where they were. However, if his cards maintain any sort of um, kind of pricing, you know, if they don't just completely go back to where they were, say if they the PSA 9 tops can hold on to maybe even 200, 150 to 200 bucks, a, you know, each um, in six months or a year from now or even beyond that then I think this Chong card is a great buy at the current price if you can pick one up for two to $300 because eventually collectors are going to look at relative pricing and this card is much lower population, much harder to find, also considered you know like a rookie card. And I just think pricing... You know, I just think that pricing will kind of equalize and some of the cards that were more rare, higher demand, higher priced before this, this crazy run up like this card, they're going to still be the more valuable cards longer term. I think they will even out and, um, you know, the, the rare minor league cards will still be, you know, the, they'll still sell for a premium. So that being said, I have two more minor league cards to show you, and I have two more cards left. So the next one is another, um, well, I'll show you the 1982 Anchorage Mark McGuire. This is when he played in Alaska for the Glacier Pilots. This one's graded PSA 9. Um, this is another pre-rookie card, minor league card, and another one that was selling for always a premium over the 1985 tops in, in PSA 9. And now this card's currently selling for less than the 85 tops, quite a bit less. I think you can still get these for about 100 bucks, the PSA 9. I think there's actually a lot of value here. I think even this one might be able to sell well during the documentary. If collectors start paying attention to this or people that go on eBay and search for Mark McGuire cards find this, um, there could still be some upside potential. Again, about a hundred bucks for this and selling, you know, for a third of the price of the 1985 tops in PSE 9. Okay, and then the last card I have to show is a minor league card from Sammy Sosa and that is his... 1987 Pro Cards. This is when he played for the Gastonia Rangers. And this one's great at PSA 9. And this is another one. Um, this is his most desirable minor league card. And was another one that was selling for, you know, this was his most valuable rookie card up until recently. Um, even more valuable than these Tiffany's and definitely more valuable than even, you know, Leaf or it's probably going for more than the Leaf PSA 10, to be honest. These were going for maybe 50 to 60. I think these are, you can still pick these up for around, you know, 60 bucks or so. Um, so another one, um, you know, I don't think this one has the same potential as the Maguires do longer term. I just think, you know, Sammy Sosa did not have a lot of collectors interested in his cards before this documentary was announced. You know, his rookie cards were dirt cheap on eBay. Again, the 1990 Leaf, about 40 bucks. That was while the, you know, 1990 Frank Thomas PSA 10 was selling for probably 120 to, you know, 150 range. Um, up until recently, until his cards blew up as well. But just gives you an idea of relative value. You know, Sosa cards were not very highly highly desirable cards. 
I'm actually considering selling these if the Tiffany's go any higher. Um, I'm almost certain that I will be able to sell them and then buy them back later at a lower price. So when I find those sort of opportunities on eBay to sell high, um, I'll usually take advantage. Not all the time, depends on the card. But with cards like these, the Sosas especially, I have no doubt I'll be able to buy those back later at a lower price. Um, they're, I think, both 100 or more for the PSA 9 Sosa Tiffany's. If they go up any more, maybe say 150 plus, I will definitely be selling these. So if long term you believe that Sammy Sosa cards are going to maintain some sort of value or you know, continue to go up over the long term, then I would say the Pro cards would be a good one to buy now. For, again, the same reason with these, I think this will equalize with some of the other Sosa cards, the prices eventually. This one will still sell for a premium long term, which it is not currently. This is selling at a discount to some of his other cards, and especially like the 1990 Leaf and the 1990 Tops PSA 10 base card, which I think is you know 80, 100 bucks or more right now on its own. So anyways, um, that's just my thoughts on the Sosa and Maguire cards right now in this craze over their rookie cards currently. I think you've pretty much missed the boat on the majority of his, uh, you know, of their cards, the tops, the f kind of flagship cards, definitely. I would be wary of buying like the 1987 Tops Tiffany. Um, Mark McGuire, PSA 10, I think is 600 plus. Which you could get it for 80 bucks, you know, a month or two ago. So again, that one, 7 to 800 percent gain. Those flagship tops cards have already, I think, run up nearly all they will as a result of this documentary. That being said, I do think probably they'll go for a little bit more when the documentary runs, or at least maintain the current prices when the documentary runs. But if you want to buy one of these for your personal collection, I would say wait for six months, and the prices are going to be probably half of what they are right now. That's my prediction. You know, I'm putting it out there. It's May 15th, 2020, today. We'll check back around Christmas time and we'll see what you can buy if you can buy one of these for your Christmas present at a much lower price. That's my bet. So just be careful if you're buying any of these Sosa and Maguire cards at this point for any sort of you know profitable venture, whether it's a flip or long-term investment. So do your research, as always, and appreciate you guys watching the video. Look up for more and have a good rest of your day.